Hi folks, I'm Kelly with Chicago Movie Tours and today I am at Woodlawn Cemetery in Forest Park, Illinois, a suburb a few miles west of Chicago. According to the cemetery's records, the first burial took place here in 1912. Six years later, a mass burial took place and with it, one of the most famous areas of this cemetery was established. This is Showman's Rest, a 750 plot section of the cemetery reserved primarily for circus and sideshow performers. On today's Walking Tour Wednesday, we are taking a look at on-screen sideshow acts and Chicago, and we're paying special attention to Showman's Rest and its place in film history. We will also talk briefly about Jay Marshall, a magician and ventriloquist who appeared on the small screen numerous times. So let's start with the story of Showman's Rest, which goes like this. On June 22, 1918, the Hagenbach Wallace Circus, the nation's third largest with over 250 performers in total, was traveling on two trains to put on a show in Hammond, Indiana, about 30 minutes from downtown Chicago. The first train carried the show's animal acts and it arrived safely in Indiana. But around 4 a.m., the second train, which contained the show's performers and their families, all of whom were sleeping, was rerouted to address a mechanical issue. The train pulled off onto a sidetrack, but its last five cars, including four wooden sleeper cars, stayed on the main track. While the engineers worked to fix the issue, the performers slept, but not long thereafter, an empty train barreled down the main track. Although accounts vary, the driver of the empty train ignored several stop signals and the lamps of the circus engineers who were trying desperately to stop him and his train. The empty train smashed into the circus's sleeper cars at a speed of somewhere between 25 and 60 miles an hour, according to newspaper reports. Upon impact, the circus train's gas lanterns ignited all the wooden cars and fire consumed everything. More than 100 people were injured in the crash and about 80 were killed. After the accident, the Showman's League of America, an organization established in Chicago in 1913 to meet the needs of sideshow acts, designated a portion of this cemetery as the final resting place for roughly 60 members of the Hagenbach Wallace Circus. If we move back a bit from the center elephant marker, we can see headstones labeled unknown male, unknown female, four horse driver, baldy, and smiley. So what do the Hagenbach Wallace Circus crash and showman's rest out here on the outskirts of Chicago have to do with movies? Well, we can find at least two connections. First, in 1912, the Hagenbach Wallace Circus was one of the first circuses to be filmed for mass audience consumption and exhibition. Now, the Ringling Brothers Circus had been featured on screen as early as 1908, but based on industry magazines, it was essentially one cameraman just set up on a parade route. In a catalog entitled Revised List of High Class Original Films, the on-screen Ringling Brothers Circus event is described this way. It is seen coming down a broad avenue with crowds of people on both sides. In all, the greatest and grandest circus parade ever seen on a motion picture film. But the Hagenbach Wallace Circus film from 1912 is described differently. First, it is labeled a feature length film consisting of four reels. It includes every phase of the big circus, one newspaper reports, arrival of train cars, setup of cooking and dining tents, a peek inside the blacksmith shop, the rush for tickets, and the circus departure. Further, patrons can see the circus from every conceivable viewpoint. So this film then was made to be a feature presentation at the opera houses and movie houses where it played for about 15 cents a showing. A second way the Hagenbach Wallace on-screen circus differs from Ringling Brothers is that advertisements take great pains to discuss the film cinematography. 
For example, when the cameramen set out to photograph the Hagenbeck Wallace Circus for the moving pictures, they soon realized that they had the most difficult subject yet offered to them. Moreover, newspapers report, the spectator will notice the perfection of the art of photography. Statements like these tell audiences that they will be witnessing something special when they watch this film, something that took a lot of people a lot of work to put on screen. A third difference between the Hagenbach Wallace Circus and Ringling Brothers is that the on-screen performance in the circus ring accounts report has been taken from a special performance put on in the open without the big tent up, which helps much to make the film high grade. Like the statements about the camera work, this tells us the production was methodically staged and directed, as opposed to just a person setting up a camera at a parade. This 1912 film that apparently circulated throughout the Midwest between 1912 and 1916 is unfortunately inaccessible to us, but it is one way we can link the Hagenbach Wallace Circus and therefore Showman's Rest to the movies. A second connection occurs in the 2011 fantasy drama Water for Elephants, starring Reese Witherspoon, Robert Pattinson, Christoph Waltz, and Hal Holbrook. At the beginning of the film, a circus owner encounters a man who has strayed from his nursing home peers, played by Hal Holbrook. As the two strike up a conversation, Holbrook's character reveals he worked in the circus business when he was younger and was present during one of the most infamous circus disasters of all time, equal in seriousness, as he puts it, to the Hagenbach Wallace Circus wreck. Brothers never saw the end of 31. Are you telling me that you were there for... Right in the middle of it. Well, that's incredible because... Um... You know, after the Harper Fire and the Hagenbach Wallace Wreck, that's uh, pretty much the most famous circus disaster in history. To this day, many circus performers, magicians, and sideshow acts still choose to be buried here at Showman's Rest at Woodlawn Cemetery in Forest Park, Illinois. And one of those is Jay Marshall. Walk with me for a second over here to his grave. Jay Marshall was a magician and ventriloquist whose hand puppet, a rabbit named Lefty, appeared more than a dozen times on CBS's long-running variety program, The Ed Sullivan Show. A longtime resident of Chicago, Marshall also opened for Frank Sinatra and Liberace. If you've ever been to the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History, you can see Jay Marshall's puppet Lefty alongside Charlie McCarthy and Kermit the Frog. In addition to our primary goal, to discover Chicago through film, Chicago Movie Tours is always interested in how film, TV, and popular culture impact our lives and what they mean to the people who interact with them. So in closing, what do you think Showman's Rest means to sideshow performers and to those around the globe, Chicagoans included? I have a few theories. For sideshow performers, this open space flanked by four stone elephants, each with its trunk lowered in mourning, likely symbolizes a memory of a terrible accident in the profession, a place to rest alongside people like you, and a symbol of camaraderie. With this last bullet point, you might check out the 2017 musical The Greatest Showman for a film that represents this sentiment of colleagues taking care of their own. Ready? Showtime. So that's what showman's rest might mean for sideshow performers. But what about for other visitors, including those who live in and around Chicago? Well, it seems Showman's Rest mostly represents, for them, a bizarre roadside attraction and Instagram opportunity. After all, it shows up on lists that relish in the strange and macabre, like Roadside America, Haunted Places, Cult of Weird, and Weird Illinois. What do you think? Did we miss anything? Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, I'm Kelly with Chicago Movie Tours, and I hope to see you next Wednesday for another virtual walking tour.